Okay, welcome everyone. Chris Petri. We're back. We're back in business. We're enjoying our watercolors here, and uh, we're going to actually work on a really interesting, um, uh, fun painting to do. Um, we're going to make this sort of like an antique shop, you know, someplace where we're driving out in the countryside and you see all these interesting um, antique shops and um, places like that where there's... Uh, it's just a peaceful feeling and more of a feeling of relaxing and being on vacation, perhaps. No worries, no stress. And um, we're going to try to build into this uh, exercise a little bit of th some, some three-dimensionality to the, to the painting, to the exercise. So that's going to be our goal. This is the look we're after. Um, sometimes I'll just take a, a look at some artwork in some of my books that I have in my library. And, and that's sort of what I'll do here. I'll use this um, picture in mind here um, so we get a nice feel of light. And um, it's like a storefront kind of feel. And then there's some interesting stuff in the background there. You can see that other window inside the uh, interior of the um, uh, antique shop, let's say. And um, there's some beautiful sunlight coming across the picture here. Um, on the windows and the signage and the um, the uh, siding, the wood siding, shake siding on the on the structure here, the building. And uh, so this looks like a really fun thing to try out. Um, we can kind of incorporate the idea of some feeling of the three dimensional. Um, um, uh, design principle where we want to try to build in some of that depth in our painting and that's putting in this window in the interior of this uh, antique shop here uh, with alongside the front of the, sh the shop with the sunlight here so you get that feeling of the uh, exterior of the building here in the forefront of the painting the foreground and then in here the darker areas um, where it's uh, deeper into the painting, it looks like it's you know, uh, you know, further away, maybe 10, 20 feet into the building, and then beyond that, there's some more light coming through that window. So then we kind of feel like there's an maybe the outside of the building on the other side of this window. So you really get a nice feel of that uh, that uh, dimensional feeling. So that's what we're looking for here. So I'll set this across for me and we'll, I'll set up my uh, camera here a little better to uh, work on our focus here to get ourselves zoomed out on our working space. And that's good. And we'll start off with a maybe like a tonal value uh, sketch to sort of give us a feeling of um, what the darks and the lights are going to be in our composition here. Uh, we can use sharpies. You can use you can use pencil, like uh, maybe the uh, crayon type uh, pencils. So this is like a um, this is a, Sch a Schwartz pencil by Faber Castell. It's a black pencil. It's like a crayon basically, a little bit harder. Um, you can use the uh, peel crayons, China markers. That works too, China markers. And then we'll just, we'll look at this drawing here. Maybe I'll just outline it so we can see what we're working with here. So I'll just go around, this is the doorway. Simple shape of a rectangle like that and the uh, 
stone or, or wood steps on the outside of that doorway. Okay, then let's, in here you, we have the window. And there's some uh, boxes and interesting things here and some items in the store, in the antique store. So I'm just putting in some of those and those are pretty dark too. And then this would be the, um, the window panes. And then up here is really dark, so we're going to put in our dark darks up here. And pretty much all the interior here is dark, so we can kind of just color this in. It's a little bit lighter toward the closer to the doorway, the opening to the to the antique store. It's a little lighter here. And its darkest point is up here. So maybe we'll make a note of that by giving it some extra darks here, like that. And these crayons are great. You can use just a regular pencil too if you want, just to shade it in a little bit to give yourself uh, the idea of where you want your darkest darks. And then for the windows here, we're just going to put in some darks on the tops of the windows. The lights, uh, the shadowing under the windows are pretty dark here and on the, on the glass of the window panes. And they're still pretty dark here. So I'm just referring back to my painting that I found in my watercolor um, book I have. And so we'll do some darker areas there. So basically we just did a rectangle here, a rectangle here, rectangle, rectangle. So these are all just basically your rectangle shape, you know, sort of like a square, just a little bit more uh, longer than a square. And that's kind of what we're looking for is to get that repeating shape. And then here's another rectangle here. That's the sign, the antique sign on top. And maybe just a little bit of script there. And then maybe there's the... side of the building. Maybe there's some trees over here and things like that. <clears throat> and then we have um, a table here, so there's some dark shadow under that table. And the table's like this. And there's a, a wood, maybe. A wood barrel with some interesting things and maybe some flowers in here along the, the doorway. So as you can see, I'm just outlining the basic shapes here. And I'll outline the doorway with the uh, trim around the door. And that's really it. And there's some other antiques on this table out front. Maybe there's a water pot here, a flower water pot, and some uh, bowls and maybe some flower pots. And you can create your own ideas on this. This is just a like a rough guess, you know, guesstimate on what we're going to be putting into the our painting here. So that's the that's the basic uh, idea of it. And I just framed it out so we have an idea of framing it out for our boundaries. And then I, once I get that completed. Then we can go in and we can start doing our, our pencil drawing from this. And let's even make it more simple. Let's not go as detailed as this. This might be a little bit too much detail than we might need, but still we can refer to it. And then here I'm going to use a, I'll use a ruler here. So I'll do my doorway. And since this is an exercise, um, no, no worries about making things perfect. I'll just use a ruler to get my my doorways here and, and windows. So again, we're remembering that we're doing a rectangle, basically like a square shape. That's a doorway, very simple. And then maybe the trim on the top of the door is larger, so we'll make a wider wood trim on top of here, like that, and then thinner wood trim on the sides. 
like that, like this. And we'll do the trim like that, just a little. It, f it flares out a little bit, the trim on the top here, like this. And then let's do the two windows. They're lower than the, than the top of the door, so that's really, again, we can make hash marks on the side of the painting. We can look over here at our first sketch, or this could be the actual picture you might find. You could really look up any. You could look up any type of picture in like online on on a search on the internet and find like antique stores, and then you, you find a picture you like of an antique store, the front of it, and if it doesn't look too complicated, you can uh, use that as your um, front your storefront. And uh, so here we just remember that the windows are not quite as high as the top of the doorway. The the doorway is a little bit t taller. And uh, so we'll do that. We'll we'll take our ruler and we'll we'll just make a note over here. Okay, that's about where the tops of the window windows are. There's two windows there. So one, two windows here, and maybe I'll we'll make the two windows like this. And since there's things on tables down here, we don't have to worry about drawing the bottom of the windows, just the tops. And we can leave that go. Okay. And we're getting a good feel for the windows here. And then for the windows, we remember there's, from our picture, we're looking at the, we'll just remember it's, it's four, four rectangles within the window. One, two, three, four. And the same over here. You know, we kind of get the center mark where the window is, the center line, and then you can always make little hash marks on your drawings. I meant to say that. Because because once we start painting, you won't see those those small little marks here and there. So it's fine to make little marks for yourself as you're drawing. And then here we have some, we'll make the table over here. And we'll have a potted plant there. Maybe another there. And then over here, We have that potted uh, plant. Maybe that's a wood wood barrel type flower pot. Then with some indications of some foliage here, maybe some flowers. So I'm just gonna make a little note for myself with little pencil marks just to remember that I'm gonna put some greenery and some maybe a few flowers in here. And we'll paint that all in. We won't draw that. We'll just make the, the note on our paper with some little sketch marks that we will help us to remember what's going to be in there. You could go a little more detailed than this. I'm trying to abbreviate a little bit here. And that looks pretty good. And then the sign here, antique sign, let's do that. And then I did freehand. The windows are a little more carefully built when, the, when they're building the building. A, a sign like this, the antique sign might be a little more, not as much, uh, fancy uh, perfection to it. So I'll just maybe do that. A couple, maybe it's made out of wood planks. And then we'll paint that in. We'll just remember to sketch in our antique sign. And that should be good. And then we could do our, our lines for our siding on the building and that's fine just some indications of lines so we remember to do that when we're painting just some light lines so we know to do this when we're doing some of the details of the painting and these areas are going to be dark so I'll put a little bit of 
lines there, knowing that this is going to be dark, this is going to be dark, so I'll, when we go over this with a dark, you'll never see these little pencil lines like this, so that's why it's okay to do that when you're planning out how you're going to paint everything, and then here, this is all going to be dark, and then we're going to do the windows in the back of the uh, antique store, and it's a little further away, so it'll be a little smaller. And we have some things on tables inside the store. This is all going to be very dark in here. So we won't worry too much. Maybe we'll see a little bit of the floor here. And that should be fine. So we're ready to paint. We'll take a, a, a break. And um, it's good to take breaks. Maybe every 15, 20 minutes take a break. Like, you know, for me personally, I would do this first for 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. I would take a break for maybe 10, 15, 10 minutes, maybe. Then I'd come back and I'd do this um, for another 10 or 15, 20 minutes and then take another break. And then I'd come back and start painting. And then once I'm painting a little bit, I take another break. And I usually take breaks as I go because it helps... Um, it helps to uh, let the um, concentration build back up again. I noticed that uh, after about 15 or 20 minutes, I start to lose a little bit of concentration. So th that's when usually I'll start to maybe some areas of my painting or my drawings will start to, start to falter a little bit. So that's why I, I take lots of breaks. And um, because of the video, I'm just going a little bit quicker, but I'm actually gonna take a break now and we'll come back in, you know, 10, 15 minutes. And, but actually in real time on our video here. So we'll be right back. Okay, and we're we're back again, and welcome back, and I'm glad you're with us here, and we're we're just going to start our painting now. We've uh, worked on our exercise. We've done our preliminary um, value tonal value sketch where we got our darks in to to figure out where our most uh, extreme shadow is, where the darkest darks are inside our antique shop and on our windows here, and we'll develop this a little more as we do our uh, exercise here. But we just wanted to get an overall idea of how our exercise is going to look. So we, again, made sure our um, our sketch contained our darkest darks, maybe some of our middle values, and then our lights, of course, is the white paper. Or a little bit of wash on there. We'll do, a gl we'll do some glazings on here, some light, light glazings. And, of course, we'll do our darkest darks here. And then we just did our drawing, pencil drawing. We used our ruler. I uh, have a, uh, usually try to... Uh, I use a half ruler here. It's a little bit easier to work. I just actually broke my ruler in half. I just took a um, razor knife and just put a couple lines on my ruler and then just I broke it in half and this way it's a little easier to work on this uh, size uh, paper. And I'm going to use three brushes basically. I'm going to use um, a needlepoint brush, um, a, a small square brush, and then a regular round brush. And these are all natural hair brushes. Uh, this is a Kalinsky Sable. This is um, squirrel hair um, needlepoint brush. And then this is, um, I think this is also um, squirrel hair, uh, square brush here. Okay, so I'm going to start the painting here. Let's have fun. Let's get right into it. Okay, let's start with our darks first. Um, we're going to go with Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, French Ultramarine Blue, and this tends to give us a real nice warm, warm and cool dark that'll work for our interior space here. And maybe we'll put a little bit of cadmium red in there too. And you can darken and lighten it up as you want. And I'm just going to take my time with my round brush. And I'll try to make little variations in the 
in the brush strokes so we don't have to be perfect. Then we can go straight into the paint too as well to get an interesting uh, look there. Straight into the blue. And I'm just changing the brush strokes around, but I'm trying to be careful to go around this window. And there's some interesting uh, things on the table here, so I just make some shapes, some square like shapes there. Okay, very simple. We got our darks in, then we can even go with some more blue up here, maybe to make it even darker. And that's plenty. Then we'll get our window pane in. Now here, the, one of the key things is just to be careful not to lean your hand into the to the fresh paint, so you keep your keep your your hand. You know, try to. Sometimes you can move your brush closer, like you can move your brush you know, in and out like that with your, um, so if you want to get an area and you don't want to lean into it with your hand and get, you know, smudge it, you can stay away from it with your hand like that and then just adjust your brush to, to get closer into the spot you're going to paint. And we'll do our window pane like that. Perfect. And we'll do some more and then we'll go into some lighter this is lighter here at the window area. There's more light. I'll take a tissue, tap off some, I'll rinse my brush, tap off some of the water, and then maybe we'll, we'll just bring some of this paint that's already here down into the this area to get our lighter tonal values and what that does is it saves us a step of having to go back to the palette again we can kind of um, use what's on the paper and maybe some cadmium orange and then we'll go back and more darks here And then we have, it gets uh, darker da down below. There's like a bench or a table over here where the window is and then it gets darker under here. So there's kind of a shadow underneath that bench table in there. So we'll just... And we'll just pretend maybe the light's coming into the doorway a little bit there. So we'll leave that white paper. Okay, so that's basically the interior. Very simple. Um, we could add a little... A little bit of tone with some yellow ochre. There, that, that, that looks good. But just a little bit. You could leave it white paper too, that would be fine. And we'll, we'll start, we'll keep going with our darkest darks. And French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna. And then here we could switch over to our square brush. It might be easier to work with a square brush now. French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna.
and I'm just looking up here at the um, drawing we did. Then I just might make some changes to these shapes, just a little bit. Keep it looking interesting. Maybe we'll go with some more darks here, under this table. I'll go straight into the burnt sienna. Maybe a little bit of a cobalt blue. That's a good shadow color. And maybe more shadow like that. And I'll put a couple shadow lines. There and... I'll do a shadow line there. <clears throat> Real simple. With the square brush. It's right into the darks. Like that. And that looks pretty good. Okay, now we've got our darkest darks in. We can go back to our round brush and we'll just start doing some of the, um, maybe we'll get on some color here for the siding, which is sort of We'll make a siding color, which is uh, burnt sienna. Um, a little bit of uh, yellow ochre. A little bit of burnt umber. So we're just going to make some of those uh, warm earth tones. And raw sienna. We could Okay, that, that'll be good. And then we can just uh, we'll have some fun with this. Just we'll we'll go across. Let's leave the sign. Let's paint around this sign. But that's all. Just you know, dragging the brush across. Leave some white paper here and there. We can do some splashing if we want. Add a little water to the mixture to get some more, uh, add more water to that, and then we can, a little bit of texture, so we'll just splash a little bit here and there, and we'll keep going. Then we can go with, um, just to keep it, um, the colors changing here and there. You can go back over, add some burnt umber, and add some of that. You could dry off the brush a little bit. We can go in and get a little bit of cerulean blue, a little bit of coolness in the uh, mixture too. We're not worrying about the real details of anything right now, just getting on the color of the siding, the wood wood siding on this building here, this antique shop. And we could do some color too on the trim. And that's about all we have to do. We can do some color there. And again, 
burnt umber, raw sienna, burnt sienna. Uh, a little bit of water to it. We're going to keep this pretty light, this wash. This wash is not uh, really that dark. It's kind of light and we leave some white paper here and there. And we can also add some of that to the windows. I'll add some cooler colors to the windows too. So now we'll work into the window areas. Adding a little bit of that cerulean blue. That would be some of the sky reflection and the trees around. And then we'll do some more details now. We'll get some darker darks. So I just took a little bit of that dark mixture and mixed it in with the uh, burnt umber and raw sienna. And we'll just do some of this barrel like that. No need to get too detailed. We'll add some greens, sap green, raw sienna. And we'll just put in a little bit of uh, some, some leaves and plants and stuff. I'll do a little splashing there. Like that. And we'll use again our mixtures here just to get our, our table. Like that. And that's all. And then it's just a matter of, you know, filling in some, uh, we can use repeating colors. And I'll just take some of that color and mix it around a little bit. And I made this uh, watering can uh, cerulean blue. That's all. Cobalt blue. And maybe we can go in and do some uh, more exciting colors. Maybe we go with a the red there. And then if you add in something and it starts to, you can just take a, a, a tissue and, and blot it up a little bit. So I'm just doing some added interesting colors. Maybe some red here for this flower pot over here. And then there's some other, um, And the windows here can use some color. And I'm just doing some lines on the windows just to give them some color. I'm gonna go across the sign really quick just to give that a little bit of color, a little bit of tonal value to it. And that's really, the next thing we'll do is we'll, we'll take another break and we'll come in and just do some final touch-ups, add a couple more shadows, and I think that'll be really, we'll really have got, you know, really the bulk of everything now is complete. We don't want to go o overwork it too much, so I'm, just, I'm going to come back after a quick break and we'll just do a quick few, a few touch-ups here and there. And that should be fine. And we're back from a break. Welcome back again. We're, we're actually, I'll tell you, breaks are a fantastic thing, especially with watercolors because the glazings get, uh, have a chance to dry, um, which is really, I know many times uh, with watercolor painting, it's, um, 
there's always it's it seems to be a um, sort of like a um, most of the times it's a habit and I have this habit and I always fight I always fight to take a break because if I don't <clears throat> I tend to keep going and painting and then that's when I start to um, I guess um, lose control of some of the washes and the, the finer details in the painting so when we stop and we take a break we actually uh, have two benefits. One, the um, paint gets to dry a little bit, and two, you can we can step back and look at the painting and and sort of kind of uh, look at it, critique it a little bit, look, say to ourselves, what what do we have to finish on this, and and and, we, and then we can always come back again and take another break and see if there's any more details we want to add further, but. If we don't take breaks and we just keep going, a lot of times we're, we're going to over finish our painting. And I know I've done that many times. It's most watercolor artists will always say that they tend to overwork their paintings a little bit. So that's no no big deal. Everyone does it. I do it. But for here on this painting, we've, we've taken lots of breaks. And now we're going to go in. We'll do a little more and see. Um, we'll keep looking back at our our sketch here as well as if you have something you're working from. So I see that we can go back in and we'll make some more darks here. Blue, brown, burnt sienna. Oh, I think here, I'm just gonna look at the um, reference. So here on the windows, there's a shadow, and uh, I keep a tissue when I dry off my brush a little bit here and there. This is a fun time to add some interesting colors, so I added some yellow ochre and cadmium red. Sometimes it's interesting to put a little, war a little warm shadow in there. We can mix that around. Maybe a little bit of uh, coolness too in there. Cerulean blue. And yellow ochre and sap green. Olive green, a little bit of olive green. I blend that around. And we can <clears throat> we can uh, That looks pretty good. Okay, now let's see. We can use our needlepoint brush and we will we'll get some water. Burn umber. Burn sienna. Raw umber. And then here we'll just do some quick, for the siding on the building, some quick lines like that. I 
I wouldn't even worry about the pencil lines underneath that we did before. I would really just you can maybe a few of the pencil lines you can go over like try to you know but that's fine and then we'll do a couple of these these would be sort of in a brick pattern but very few Then we can go with a little darker tonal values, like that. And then just a few um, darker here and there. So we do the lighter lines first for our, for our uh, wood siding on this building. And then we go in, we make a little darker mixture, and we do a few darks, but not too many. Um, we can do some really interesting, very, very light, just a little bit of uh, tonal value. couple lines here for the wood floor inside the building like that that looks interesting maybe a little bit of blue I might uh, make this window here a little I can make more of a square edge on that window. It looked a little bit uh, tilted a little bit too much, so I can fix that up a little bit. So you can fix up little areas you need to. And um, let's do a few lines across here. Just making darks here, uh, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. I went with my lighter color, you know, our, our lighter tonal value first for the wood slats, and then I do a couple darker ones with the darker mixture. I'll go with my round brush again and we'll do a shadow French ultramarine blue a little bit of that mixture there just so, so for some shadow over here some shadow over here and we'll add some some colors to the shadowing just a little bit For some balance, let's do a flower pot here. I'm 
Oh, I'm just going to do a little bit of a, some... We'll balance this a little bit. And I'm using my needlepoint brush again, just to get some feelings of some twigs and, and uh, plants, more finer details. Just a few indications should be fine. We could even um, add a few colorful, some maybe flowers here, some red flowers. Maybe some orange. Bring some more interesting color into the composition. Just a few dabs of color. And that's looking very pleasing and pleasant. a little bit of a, a little bit some blue in there just to give it some variation maybe there's some shadowing under there maybe that's uh, a little bit of shadowing underneath the uh, And a few more And I'm trying to just add a little bit of more repeating colors around the painting. So we use the red and the orange and so maybe we'll just add a little bit of that color here and there. And again our shadow colors. And that looks good. And we'll, we'll see how... Uh, we'll peel off the tape here. And this is a fun composition to do. We did a lot of different techniques here with, you know, different um, features, windows, doors interiors, exterior with sunlight, um, some potted plants with flowers, we did um, some signs. So this this painting really, this composition really kind of helps us to work on a lot of different things at one time. And we'll zoom in maybe and see how this looks.
I hope we had fun. This is the finished um, painting. It's a composition. We had a lot of fun. We we really keyed in on our um, tonal value composition here, which gave us our darks and lights, and we followed this pattern. So we used this pattern before we started. And then we just you copied that idea of the darks in our painting through through these sections here. And that really makes a big difference, having a lot of uh, powerful tonal value in your paintings. Um, and then we went with very light washes around the um, front of the building where the sunlight is. So you can see that we left lots of lighter tonal values in the front of the building. So that really works well using a tonal value sketch first in black and white and then just having that as next to your table when you're working and you can use that as your format so you know when you need to do your darks and when you need to lighten up a little bit and you'll have a fantastic time with this. This is a painting you can do over and over again and you can change it around and make things different. You know, you can add more interesting objects in the front of the store maybe or um, you can make more signs, you can make it larger uh, in size. So a lot of uh, potential here for uh, fun things to work on. All right, everyone, have a great evening, morning, day, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.